Hi everybody, Josh at Flex Trades here at PT Expo 2023. We're joined by Chad Stover, the technical marketing manager for Conair, the world's leading supplier of auxiliary equipment for plastics manufacturers. Chad, thank you very much for the time. Thank and you. Uh, he's gonna show us around the booth a little bit today and tell us a little bit about Conair. So Conair is kind of the soup to nuts company of auxiliary equipment. So anything you need for resin from entering the silo through the throat of the machine, whether that's a molding machine or an extruder, mm -hmm. that, that, that equipment can come from Conair. We've got drying, blending, conveying, heat transfer, size reduction. We're big into reusing, recycling, and our theme this year is make every pellet count. So we know the value of every pellet and we wanna make sure our processors can use every pellet to help the environment and help their bottom line. Sustainability and environmental friendliness are two of the big drivers in every industry today, especially right. manufacturing. So that's a great theme to be having for the year. What do you wanna show us in the booth that we wanna make sure people that don't make it to the expo this year see? Sure, so let's start out with blending. So we'll move to our right and then we can talk about blenders. Head on over. So this is a resin blender. This is used in the plastics industry to blend different types of material. And in here we've got some colorant added to virgin material. And what the blender does is it's got a couple bins in the back for your virgin and a couple bins in the front for your additive or regrind. So we talked about that sustainability. You wanna be able to reintroduce that regrind into your process. This is one way to do that. One of the things you'll see as we move throughout the booth today is that we've made our controls easy to use for everybody. One of the oh, things cool. we've heard from processors is it's hard to find staffing right now and it's hard to find staffing that can get trained easily. So we've made our controls easier to use. Any piece of Conair equipment we walk up today will have the common control platform. When we say common control, we're talking about common hardware and common user experience. So I'll show you at each piece of equipment, but basically you can see that this control is showing us information on the control, how to operate it. Every Conair control, same user experience, you're always gonna have these selectable items on the menu button, what we call the hamburger button. Um, you can log in and out. And the cool thing about Conair equipment is we've got multiple languages for multiple users. Awesome. We can set permissions by user and we can set languages and recipes by user. So when I walk up to a piece of equipment, if I speak Spanish, this control speaks Spanish. Mm -hmm. As soon as I walk away, the next operator may speak English, that control will speak English for him. And those settings move with the operator so that whenever I log in, it changes the settings for my particular needs. The other nice thing is contextual help mode. So on all of our machines, this is kind of like a manual built into the control. You can't mess things up because when you go into contextual help mode and hit any button, it's gonna show you what pressing any button or changing any setting on that screen does. So every machine, every screen, you've got help. And that helps you from blender to dryer to thermalator to conveying system to understand the system. And then, like I said, you'll see at each piece of equipment, once you learn one Conair piece of equipment, you'll be comfortable on the rest. Chad, I love that feature because you and I both know the real tech that does the heavy liftings inside the guts of these machines. Right. But the people that need to make that machine work to do that heavy lifting have to interact through that control. Right. Lots of controls are either very word heavy or icon heavy. Having this kind of blend of words and icons with that, this is like a wizard, like anybody with a Microsoft familiarity is gonna have. The spool up for an operator to train up on this has to be much faster, light years faster than a typical controller. Right, yes. Awesome. And if we always say if you can run your iPhone, you can run a piece of Conair equipment. And the nice thing is it used to be you had to have an expert on running the blender, an expert on running the dryer, an expert on running the molding machine. Now, since they're all so similar, they all have the same user experience, one person can run your entire line. You don't have Amazing. to have, you don't have to say, hey, I need Joe over here because he knows how to run the dryer. No, anybody can run the dryer. Mm -hmm. And circling back to that sustainability emphasis, the easier it is to run right. and not run inaccurately, right. the e harder it is to end up wasting right. material. So, yep. so we'll be talking cool. about that in another another piece of equipment also. We're, we're big on, like we said, make every pellet count. Yeah. So you make every pellet count by not making the easy mistakes and then you make every pellet count by making sure your equipment is designed to use every pellet properly. So this is a Conair thermalator. This is a temperature control unit. A lot of people refer to these temperature control units as thermalator. It's kind of like a lot of people say Kleenex for any brand of Kleenex. But the thermalator brand is actually a Conair brand that we've had for a long time. And you'll see that on this control, remember we talked about that common control? This is the common control. So you've got that same hamburger menu with your same list of things, alarm list, systems, maintenance, users, configuration, settings, reports. So like I said, if you can run the blender, 
You can come over and run this thermalator. You've got easy set points here. You're just changing set points with a single touch, easy navigation, easy to operate for the easiest user experience possible. And being able to have that sign in, sign out, you're getting one more level of verification Absolutely. and tracking for you know efficiencies and whatnot at the operator level. And you may want some operators to be able to change set points, maybe some you don't. Some operators you may want to change other things like process temperatures. So you can set that per operator based on their skill level or based on their permission level. Well, and let me ask you something too, since you brought up the Kleenex example, right? The becoming eponymous. Right. How does it make you feel when you have a potential client talk about their uh, regulator in a setting and call it a thermalator? We love it. And, and you're sitting here just smiling to yourself going, yep, this is how big we've gotten, how, how far we've spread. Right. It's just like everybody says Google. I'm yep. gonna Google that term. Well, when they say thermalator, we know that they recognize the value of Conair equipment. Awesome. What else should we be seeing? So this is a Crown Air conveying control system. This is the Smart FLX, which means it's a flexible system. It expands with your processing plant. So on this example, we've got a screen here that's got four uh, pumps. These are a mix of a positive displacement pump, a long distance pump. Also on the control, we've got all our receivers. And these are a mix of Duraload receivers. These could be anybody's receiver, but ideally this is made to connect to a Con Air system. One of the things that's very new to conveying control is the ability to control and see what's going on in your silo. So you've got 40,000 pounds of resin in here. That we can tell you exactly what's in that silo, how much is left. This can actually talk to your procurement people so that you don't have that necessary uh, link between. This is the link between, so you know when you need to order material. And what I love about that feature too is, I mean, not just the efficiency and sustainability we've been talking about, but those of us in the know realize some of the most dangerous points in a facility are with those silo checks when people are still doing them physically. Right. So being able to access, access this right at the machine, I mean, you're cutting out like four middlemen in a potential safety hazard too. Exactly. Another thing that's, that you're cutting out potential for, in this case, disaster. So we have locks at the bottom of silos. So if your rail car pulls up or your truck pulls up, there's a chance that truck driver or rail car operator could convey 40,000 pounds of material to the wrong silo. You could be blending materials that you don't want blended. You could be sending the wrong material to the wrong place. Of course. This can lock and unlock those couplers. So only the right one will open. He scans a barcode when he pulls up, the right coupler will open. He can only send material to the right silo. Very cool. Besides being super effective and efficient here too, another thing that's got me smiling uh, kind of big is one of the things we push a lot is there's this misconception among the old guard in manufacturing that this new generation entering is not capable of doing the work because all they do is play with video games. And anybody that's played any kind of a video game with a resource map to it, yep. to, I mean, the integrations, you know, part for part, like people are already preparing for running your controller in, in these uh, playing video games as kids. Right. And nobody, nobody wants to feel uncomfortable. So it's nice that, you know, like we talked about that contextual help, on any screen you hit that button, it'll tell you what settings you're changing in there. So you don't have to worry about making that mistake. Mm -hmm. So this is very common, what you would see in a lot of processor plants. This is a selection station. This is a small scale one, but this would be used in some smaller facilities. You could have these the whole length of a wall in some facilities. What it is, is a fantail manifold. So you're gonna have one source. This could be your silo. This could be your drying hopper. And you're taking the resin from that one source to multiple destinations. These would be, in this case, four different destinations from one source. The tabletop here is where you make your changes. So for example, this is going out to a machine and it's coming in from a silo at the bottom. What's new about this system is these lights. So what we've done here is we've made it kind of like Simon, the old game we used to play as kids. I can see that yellow light flashing. That tells me that that's the one I need to move. Okay. So I pull this out. Now I'm like, oh, I forget where that needed to go. You don't have to worry about it. The table is going to tell me. The blue light's where it needs to go. If for some reason I'm not paying attention or I make the wrong selection and I put it in here, there's my red light. It's not going to let that material convey. So there's no chance of the wrong material going to the wrong place. It's telling me I need to move that. I've made a mistake. Put it in here. Before I place it in, I also want to mention these are RFID tags. So we're tracking with proofing technology. And you can see how this can spin. This is gonna be attached to a hose and sometimes you don't wanna to have to muscle that around. So when I put this in here, I can just rotate this to where it needs to be. It's got the RFID connection. There's my green light, conveying will start. Now, if I made the wrong connection, 
the rest of the table still operates. I'm still conveying material from all these locations or to all these locations, but this one will not convey until it's on here. So on the table, we've got complete traceability and proofing. So a lot of our customers need proofing for their end customers. They'll say, are you proofing your system? This is your proofing system. We know exactly what happened when, complete traceability. We can give you that report. Uh, so it's all really good information that's stored in the conveying control. And I mean, going back to making things simpler, like you were talking about, mentally simpler with the lights, you know, the, it's essentially augmented reality at the hardware stage right. instead of having to actually augment reality, but also making it physically easier too. So the, again, reducing barriers to entry for people working in the industry, make right. it easier to run the machine and do the physical work. Uh, fantastic addition. Yep. What else should we see? So we asked processors, what are some of the biggest problems you have? And they said mistakes on the floor. Totally accidental mistakes where you're connecting the wrong material. Totally accidental mistakes where you forgot to load the dryer and now you've got wet material running through. One of the things that can help solve that problem is the moisture minder. Okay. So we've talked about the resin selection station being foolproof, avoiding mistakes. Moisture minder is the same thing. You can see this is a very small add-on piece. It's totally self-contained. It's got a control that plugs into 110 volt power and it's got a communication cable to this. So what's happening here and what we're simulating is the throat of a machine. You can see we've got polycarbonate running down through from our loader mm -hmm. to the throat of the machine. We're testing the actual moisture content inside that before you're processing. I can see trend lines on the control. And what I'm reading is parts per million of moisture. I can see that this polycarbonate is 1,395 parts per million. As you can see the automated system, we've got a loading level sensor here. It just told the loader that we need more material. Now that's gonna feed down through to the throat of the machine. So this is all being tracked throughout time. If for some reason you had wet material passing through like we have right now, mm -hmm. you could pull that batch out and not send it to customers. I love that. And you know, again, about reducing barriers, when we were at the table, we were talking about making it more accessible for an operator, but it's even little things like this running off a of 110. So somebody that wants to add this to an existing machine that doesn't want to bring in an industrial electrician and drop down more 410 or 220, yep. that, that they have a plug-in right there That's that, that they can add this right onto and make it easier to make the machine they're running already more efficient and more sustainable. And what processors are doing right now typically is they're not testing the moisture level until they have a problem. Mm -hmm. Then they're pulling a cup out, you know, running it over to a Carl Fisher moisture analyzer, seeing what the moisture level is. This is doing this real time all day long. It's and, monitoring the process. And what have we found with everything else in production? Preventative and predictive maintenance is worth every dime you spend on it, so why not do it with your materials too? Right, absolutely. Wonderful, great ad. Anything else we should be seeing today? So this is a Conair mobile dryer. We call this the DX dryer. DX meaning that it's mobile. If it were a D series dryer, it'd be a central dryer drying multiple hoppers. Mm -hmm. This one, as you can see, it's on a cart. Everything is self-contained here. This dryer has that same common control we talked about earlier. We've got our hamburger menu, same exact functionality. So you can see how if you've walked over to the blender and operated it, you can walk over to the dryer and operate it. Same exact user experience. You can feel very comfortable. And again, with that contextual help, I don't know of anybody else in the industry that's doing this, but I think it's a genius idea to put that information right on the screen. So what a mobile dryer does, in case you aren't aware, a mobile dryer is your drying or dehumidifying piece connected to your resin. So you've got your material inside here and it's gonna be drying for a certain amount of time, maybe four to six hours, depending on the resin and depending on your process. The dryer supplying that dehumidified air, the air passes through the resin all the way to the top and then you're conveying that resin out the bottom of the drying hopper to your molding machine in your process. Mm -hmm. One of the really nice things about a mobile dryer is it also includes conveying control. So you can see I've got two different conveying loaders on here. I've got the machine that's loading my drying mm -hmm. hopper with resin, and I've got the machine that's loading my machine or my primary piece of equipment. That could be an extruder or a molding machine. It's taking the resin from the bottom of the drying hopper that's nice and dry, taking it to your machine for your process. And, and a really great tool to help any uh, producer out there that maybe wants to uh, take half steps in expanding their production, right? If they already have that centralized system and they're adding some, some capabilities, it's a great way for them to be able to not have to necessarily duct work all their way in and, and add conveyors and whatnot. Are there any other benefits to having a mobile dryer in a system? So the nice thing is that it's mobile. So a lot of people are making uh, changes from machine to machine. You can actually have this setting in the hallway, drying material while you're making a change, wheel it in when you're ready for it, and then convey that material to your machine. 
Another differentiator of the Con Air dryer is the mobile wheel. So you can see we call this the Carousel Plus. Long ago, dryers used to have tanks of desiccant and you'd always be rotating that desiccant and it would degrade over time, it would make things dusty. You're refilling the desiccant when it's, when it's necessary. What we use now is a wheel and this is an example of that wheel. So we've got a fiberglass that is impregnated with desiccant and this wheel is gonna move very slowly in the machine. Now the actual drying wheel in this particular dryer is about this size and you can kind of see what's happening in that wheel in this illustration. So it's got a cooling section, it's got a regeneration section and it's got a drying section. So that wheel moves very slow, maybe one full revolution every 10 minutes or so. And you can see by going through those sections of cooling, regenerating and drying, it really extends the life of desiccant. You're not replacing that desiccant like you did with the old desiccant tanks. So we've had customers who have used the same desiccant wheel for the entire life of their dryer. That could be 10, 15, 20 years. We've had others who, you know, if you're using really dirty material, there's a chance you might need to clean this out, but this is totally cleanable with some Dawn dish soap and water. Put it back in the machine and keep using. Very cool, and extending the life cycle on that extends the efficiency on your process too because you're not in that back 25% of your material where you're trying to stretch it out and not replace it. Right. You're always getting that maximum efficiency and then you clean it out and, and right back up to 100% capability. Yep, and the wheel is totally um, a, a steady drying system. So in the old days of tanks, as that desiccant would degrade over time, you'd get high swings. Mm -hmm. Moisture levels of dew point that would raise up and then you'd rotate tanks and it would dip back down for a little while and then raise up. Since the wheel is constantly rotating, you're constantly getting a new section of the desiccant, it's a very steady process of dew point. Predictability equals productivity, so awesome. Excellent. Gr great differentiator. Anything else we should be seeing? I think that about wraps it up for today. I appreciate you guys coming over and taking a look at the Conair booth here at PT Expo. We've got a lot of exciting things going on. We didn't talk about IoT technology. We didn't talk about downstream. We sell, like I said, from soup to nuts from the silo to the end process. So we've got downstream equipment also that does piping, tubing, everything you can imagine, profiles, sheet, all that's done as part of our process also. Another nice thing is everything you've seen here in the booth today is actually made in Franklin, Pennsylvania. So we're proud that you know everything we've got here is made right here in the United States in Pennsylvania in a small town that started Conair in 1956. Amazing. FlexTrade supports American manufacturing. We love American manufacturers. Anybody watching this that is already in the plastics industry, I'm sure you're well aware of Conair, although maybe you weren't aware of some of these uh, products or features they had, check them out. But if you're not in the plastics industry or you're not in this industry yet, I suggest you check out their website too because we've already learned a lot today and a ton of the things that they're doing here to make every pellet count in plastics are cross applicable to any industry, manufacturing or otherwise. So thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, I hope you learned something too. Keep an eye on our social media and our YouTube page for the next content that we have coming out because we got a lot more to learn here at PT Expo 2023. Have a great day. Thank you.